welcome back to Game Geeks. Uh, today we are actually filming in one of the research labs at the university at which I teach. So that's why we have all the big sciencey sounds in the background. They'll come in and out. You'll hear a rattle and hiss and hum. And behind me here is a friend of mine's high vacuum isothermal chamber where he studies the crystallization of Honestly, I don't know what he does. He's explained it to me five, six times. I don't get it. I'm a squishy organic chemist. I make molecules. He just analyzes them, but I thought it looked really cool and science-y, so I wanted to use it. Today on, today on Game Geeks, we are reviewing two slightly older books. I guess the fantasy trip review took me back a little bit for the New World of Darkness line. Now, in this case, slightly older is maybe eight to 10 years as opposed to the 20 to 30 we were looking at for fantasy trip. These are two of the core line that we never got to before. Mage the Awakening and Werewolf the Forsaken. Little bit of backstory here before we go too far in. One of the cool things, White Wolf's been around for a long time. And with their first really big breakout hit was the World of Darkness. The original World of Darkness with Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, etc. Those were huge, huge games. And then after a, quite a while, there became a certain level of bloat. There came to point where, we're, you know, we've really done about everything we can. We've told about every story that we can, etc. So they killed the world. They did something that few movies will do, few TV shows. They, they broke the world. They, in every one of those lines, there had been a promised end of, end of everything. And by God, they did it. They, and they, they published books about how you can destroy the world in each one of their settings as you chose. Then they rebooted to the New World of Darkness, or NWOD, which is most of what we reviewed over the course of Game Geeks. There was originally, excuse me, there was originally an unholy trinity, as I like to call it, of books for the New World of Darkness. There was Vampire the Requiem, which we've done, there is Werewolf the Forsaken and Mage the Awakening. These two we're going to do today. Now, there are other books that have been published as well that are outside of these core three. And the original idea was to heavily support, at least the original idea as I understand it, was to heavily support the, origin, the, the core three, the Vampire, Mage, and Werewolf, and then have smaller lines of support for some of the supplemental lines. Those are Promethean, Changeling, which we reviewed, Hunter, which we've reviewed. Also, Geist, which is my personal favorite of all the New World of Darkness lines. All right, all that aside, what do we have in these? Well, one of the things that's going to happen is every one of these books is going to invite comparison to its predecessor just because it's World of Darkness, it has a similar title. How does it compare? So I'm going to try to intersperse those as we go through these reviews. To start with, Werewolf the Forsaken. Basically, the PCs are, wait for it, werewolves, and what they do is, they instead of Werewolf the Apocalypse, where they were guardians of the Earth, very Captain Planet with fur and fangs, now they are the protectors of the boundary between the real world and the spirit world. Now, I don't mean spirits like ghosts or, or Casper, those are the realm of Geist. I mean spirits like a spirit of pain, a spirit of metal, a spirit of a city. One of the things they really do in this is they drive home that the spirits are fundamentally alien from material beings. They play that up and they really play up how the spirit world or shadow is very, very different from our world, the real world. There's an extensive background mythology that comes with this. It's not really that weird. Basically, in the dawn times, all these spirits were running around in the spirit world and the real world were one. And then some of the werewolf, the father wolf was showing weakness. And so the werewolves or the Uratha, for note here, there's a lot of very weird pronunciations that they have for all of their names in here that I'm going to trip over and probably mangle. I apologize in advance. They, the, the werewolves of the Uratha realized father wolf was weakening. So they all ganged up on him and killed him. And then the moon got pissed off and cursed him. And that's when the spirit world broke. And it's your traditional fantasy-esque trope that once the world was great and then it broke and it all went to crap and now you have to pick up the pieces. It's a theme we're going to see again in Mage in just a few minutes. All right, so that being said, they keep the 5x5 five five theme that runs through most of the New World of Darkness. That is, there are five tribes in this particular form of werewolf. 
There are the blood talons that are sort of the warriors, the bone shadows, which are shamans or spirit wardens, hunters in darkness, which rely on stealth and stalkers, iron masters that sort of dominate the human side, and storm lords who are, the, who are sort of the leaders and the dominators. Then you've got your five auspices or your job in the werewolf world that are tied to the phases of the moon. The Rahu, the full moon, are the blood and guts warriors and generals. And here we go. I had to write these out. The Kalahith, who are the, are the gibbous moon. They're the storytellers. The Eldilf, the, the half moon, the judges. The Ethir, the crescent moon, or the spirit and the priests. And finally, the Iraka, who are the new moon who rely on wits and stealth. Compared to Apocalypse, well, the tribes aren't anywhere near as racially or ethnically tied as they were in Apocalypse, so you're freed up from some of that potentiality there put into here. In addition, the mythology is much less straightforward than the weaver, worm, wild triad you had in the original Werewolf. It's also less constricting, if you will. There's more you can do with the mythology other than just, I fight the worm! There's a lot more you can do in Forsaken than there was in, in terms of plot lines than there, than there was in Apocalypse. Now, the auspices, they're pretty similar to the auspices that we had in Apocalypse. They're not that different. The PCs all have gifts that come from different spirits. You get to choose those from various lists according to your tribe and your auspice. Then you have, you know, there are the, there's Renown, which is your level in Iratha society. I keep wanting to call them Guru just because I'm mentally going back to Apocalypse. Of all of the World of Darkness lines, I feel like the werewolves got nerfed the most in the reboot. Apocalypse werewolves were, okay, they enter the fray, we're done. Uh, I'm going to go home and I'm just going to let the werewolf tear through everything. Let me know when he's done. I'm not going to risk gaining any paradox points on this. It's just not worth it. So here, and honestly, if there was any one of the groups that needed toned down, it was the werewolves. They were probably the biggest victims of power creep in terms of they just got progressively more and more powerful. I, that being said, I like Werewolf the Apocalypse more than I like Werewolf the Forsaken. If for no other reason than, as I know I just criticized the mythology as constricting, I enjoy that mythology. I understand it. I can wrap my brain around it better than I can some of the concepts here in Werewolf the Forsaken. Not a bad game by any means. If you still want to play your werewolf and you want to do it in the New World of Darkness, this is for you. Although I should point out that White Wolf has just published a translation guide from Apocalypse to Forsaken and back. So if you really want to take some of the ideas from one and stick them in the other, your options are still there. Second book we're going to review, boy howdy, this is a weird one, is Mage the Awakening. Now, Mage the Ascension, in my opinion, was always the hardest and least accessible of all of the old World of Darkness lines. Because there was so much going on, it was hard to wrap your brain around. Hasn't cleaned up that much with Awakening. I'm a fairly non-dumb guy. And a lot of the backstory and mythology in Mage has taken me several readings, several attempts to interpret. And you know, this is not necessarily a bad thing. We're talking about a magical history of the universe that no one else knows or remembers. That should be a little hard to conceive and a little hard to think about. So, essentially, you are powerful will workers. You're the inheritors of an Atlantean legacy where Atlantis, the first civilization, built up magic. They were great. They tried to ascend into the supernal realms. And, of course, they broke everything in the process and they broke magic and created the abyss that exists between the supernal realms and our world. And magic is harder to work because of that. Continuing the 5x5 five five pattern, you've got five paths that determine how your magic works, or rather, from what you draw your power. Acanthus, Magistus, Morus, Orbomus, and Thrysus. A little easier because full Latin I can do. And then you've got, and you notice I'm giving you less detail here than I did in Werewolf for a couple of reasons. One is for time purposes, and the other is, there's a lot in this book, folks. There's a lot to read and digest, and I know I'm going to get criticisms now that I didn't read it and I just read off the back jacket. Yeah, I read off the back jacket. I dare you. Anyway, um, there are also five orders that sort of determine 
the Society of Magic to train you and your point of view on the difference between the magic and the mortal realms. The arcana in this, similar to what we saw before, death, fate, forces, life, matter, mind, prime, spirit, space, and time. Ten now instead of five. Okay, they broke out of their mold. Magic is a build-your-own spell system. It's mildly complex, although once you've done it a few times, I'm sure you can get the hang of it. It is, although it is made easier by rotes, which are pre-made spells that you're used to doing over and over and over again. One of the things about this is that the magic itself is a little easier to do than it was in Ascension. For example, now having a magical tool helps you rather than you've got to have it or you can't do your stuff in Ascension. One of the issues that they, they've handled well in the New World of Darkness is power creep. I feel personally that a lot of the groups are pretty well balanced. I mean, some have advantages over others. The guys are particularly hard to kill off in the long run just because they're tied to death. They can come back. Obviously, the Geist is going to be better with Ghost than a Werewolf or even a Mage that focuses in that, although both of those are going to give you options too. So, to summarize, we've now finished the Unholy Trinity of the original, of the New World of Darkness. We've done Vampire the Requiem some time ago. Go take a look. It's back there in the annals, GameGeeksRPG.com. And we've now covered Werewolf the Forsaken and Mage the Awakening. This kind of finishes most of the World of Darkness line. We've done, I think the only one we haven't done is Promethean, because I don't have it. But we've done the rest, we've done a, done a lot of the supplements. There's been less splat book effect in the New World of Darkness than there was necessarily in the old. So if you're looking for a modern magic game, particularly one with a detailed mythology that is pre-done for you that you can just dive into, then these are probably the right games for you. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming.